Should be good. What's going on, everybody? I believe everything should be working right, and we are all set up. Uh, we got lots of people on already, uh, really a lot, pretty awesome. Um, I'll let people keep coming on. We'll go over a few things. Uh, first of all, I am Josh Douglas, Navionics Pro. Uh, I've been sponsored by Navionics for a long time, so when it comes to lake mapping, I happen to know a lot about the Navionics uh, features and what they have to offer and what goes into actual looking at lake mapping. So that's what, that's what I wanna break down in this, this one. Uh, I'll, I'll have questions. I'll try to take as many questions as I can towards the end of the webinar. Uh, down on the bottom somewhere, you'll see where it says questions. You can just start putting them in there. And if uh, we didn't cover them, cover them during the actual webinar, or you want me to go into further detail about them, I'll be happy to cover them then. So I'd like to welcome you all to Understanding Contour Lines and mapping features. Uh, you can see here on the uh, the cover page that I'm running two Lowrance graphs at my face. I also have two up on the deck. Uh, so I'm all Lowrance. Navionics, as you know, works in most all chart plotter companies uh, for the most part. There's a couple exceptions, but as far as Lowrance, uh, Humminbird, of course, and Ray Marine uh, might be a little bit different, um, you know, programming with the buttons and all that. And as far as getting certain features we talked about, but at the same time, uh, it's it's all there on, on those platforms as well. You can also see there with my hands touching, I got my iPhone. I utilize an iPhone and an iPad quite often with Navionics, and we're gonna break into why I do that. I got it there on a little skosh mount. So uh, let's get right into it. When preparation meets opportunity. Um, I am one of those that start out every single seminar I do with this screenshot, because I cannot stand to go fishing <laughs> I can't stand to go fishing and not know why I caught them, where I'm gonna catch them, or why I got those bites. So a lot of times it comes down to lake mapping and just being prepared and getting to know what it is that you wanna look at. Um, you know, my Lowrance graphs are super duper important to me. They're, I mean, they tell me everything, bottom hardness, they show me fish, everything, but it's my Navionics mapping that breathes life into those units. I would not know where to start once I got off the bank if I didn't have mapping. Uh, so working shows and stuff like that, it's it, when I'm talking to people, it's it's to me not having the most up to date maps is, is literally critical to my success when I'm out on the water. It's what shows me stuff. And that's the kind of stuff that I want to break down today. Uh, what that is that helps me break down mapping options. Uh, you don't have to be I don't consider myself that old. And I don't think you have to be that old to remember all these lake maps here. Um, man, I used to carry them. I used to have them collect them. I still kind of do, but uh, they've kind of went by the wayside now lately, the last couple of years, because everything that I need is right there on my graph or I can find on my phone um, using the Navionics Boating app. So much stuff I can find, I can change water levels, all that, but I still like to keep these kind of mapping. But just to show you where it came from, you know, early in my career, Fishing Federation stuff in my early 20s, I can remember busting these maps out, just not catching fish and busting out a map in the wind trying to figure out what to do and, and all that. And now, or, or studying at home for a big trip down to Oklahoma or something, now is something that you just don't have to do that no more. You know, I can do it from the convenience of my phone. Uh, you can use the web app at navionics.com. Uh, that's free for anybody to use if you're planning a trip or just wanna see what kind of uh, Navionics contours that they have for certain lakes that it is you're gonna be fishing. Again, that'd be at navionics.com. Uh, map reading, we're gonna get right into map reading. Uh, super critical. Uh, what I'm looking at, you know, I, I do electronics trainings. I do a lot of guide trips, um, talking to different anglers, trying to help anglers out on the water up here at Lake Mille Lacs. It's crazy to me how many don't really use their mapping to, to help them find the starting points and, and, and stuff like that. And, and understanding contours is super important. As you can see, this is a traditional Navionics map here. Uh, you have your creek channel, you have your, this would be a ledge. If you're fishing something like the Tennessee River, this right here's a ledge and it comes out into a creek channel. Again, another secondary ledge. And you can see where the contours are kind of lazy out here and they get real tight. Uh, when you have contour, you're gonna have some sort of a hard bottom spot. Uh, as you can see in this image, this is an image I actually took today. Uh, mind you that my water temp was being read off of my my uh, trolling motor today, and it was hot up here in northern Minnesota. Um, 
But outside of that, you can see these lazy contour lines on the left. And when I mean lazy contour lines, I'm saying there's just not a whole heck of a lot of them. You know, they're spaced out in between each other. Uh, and that this is the end result on the right. It's pretty boring. Kind of looks like a desert. You know, you consider a desert or a Nebraska field or something like that. Very flat, uh, not a heck of a lot of features to it. And that's what you're going to get with you if you're fishing around lazy contour lines. Now, depending on the fish that you're fishing for, you know, I know walleyes and stuff like that happen to hang out on the mud uh, on places like Lake Mille Lacs and all that. But at the same time, generally, lazy contour lines uh, or lack thereof contour lines is going to equal a softer bottom, whether that's mud or this is kind of more sand uh, in this image. I bet if I dropped off this little contour here out there into that more open stuff, it would have turned to mud on me. Uh, but featureless, very, very hard to find fish outside of just using your side imaging, using your sonar to get over the top of them, maybe looking for their shadows. Uh, actually quite easy to see fish because they're on a field. But similar to deer, deer don't want to just walk out and do into fields, especially big bucks or big female bass. That they're, they're, they're not dumb. They've been around a long time. They don't do well wide out in the wide open off the sand. You know, you're not going to see a big buck walk right on the middle of the field at noon. It's just something that rarely, rarely is going to happen. They're going to use edges. They're going to use tree lines. They're going to follow creeks. They're going to do stuff like that. And fish is absolutely no different. So understanding your contour lines puts you in the right areas. Uh, for so much of bass fishing, we are working with some sort of a hard bottom. Uh, weeds, stuff like that. So you might have more of a weed bed situation on your lazier contour lines. So you have more mud, more better soil on the bottom for the weeds to grow. At the same time, if you start getting into these hectic contour lines, cluttered contour lines like this one, you come over. Now here you're coming out of 30 feet. You're coming up shallow. I could have even clipped 16. And you can see the result over here on the right is going to be a lot of rocks. I call them like craters on a moon. Uh, different something's hard. If you think of it this way, if, if you were to, if you're at the beach and you built a sandcastle on the sand, and the tide came in, it would knock that sandcastle down. It would flatten it back out and bowl it out. That's what lakes do. They make a bowl. And the, the water comes in, the water comes out, and eventually it knocks it down, and it makes it all flat. Uh, if you put a rock or a boulder or a pile of rocks there and let the, let the, the uh, tide come back in and the tide go back out, your rocks are still going to be there. Uh, that's the difference in looking for contour. It means everything to me. Uh, whether I'm in the ledges, whether uh, in Tennessee, whether I'm up here on Mille Lacs chasing smallies, or even if I'm down in Florida, it, it could be a, a 20 foot contour drop, it could be a 10 foot contour drop, it could be a two foot contour drop. It's just kind of all relative to what it is that I'm fishing. So here you see tighter cluttered contour lines equal more dramatic, harder bottoms. Okay, so that's hugely important when I'm getting going. Creek channels. Creek channels are a big, big deal, especially when we're fishing reservoirs or river systems. Uh, natural lakes, not nearly as much. They don't have creek channels necessarily flowing through them. But at the same time, these creek channels and river channels were the original creeks and rivers that were there before the res reservoirs were flooded. As you can see in this, I mean, look at all the clutter that's in that actual creek channel. My boat went over that creek channel and you can just see the shad, the rough fish, just all kinds of activity still uses that river channel, you know, that old flow. It's got the hard, harder bottom on the edges, shell beds a lot of the times, and, and it's good places for fish to get. And when we're talking about predator fish, you want to get where the bait is, and the bait like to run them creek channels. Underwater road beds, again, something you see a lot of times in your reservoirs that have been flooded out, uh, dammed up, and flooded out. There's so much good stuff that was left behind. There's foundations. Uh, sometimes your mapping shows that, uh, old building foundations, stuff like that, or in this situation, underwater road beds. And you can see here, uh, this is in the back of Sam Rayburn. Uh, I forget which creek this one is, but anyway, it's a hardcore um, road bed that jets all the way across, comes straight up. I can catch fish off of that at times. Again, it's something different. It allows for a hard bottom. Uh, it's hard all the way through. It's got turns in it where it doesn't. Those are key areas that fish will stack up on and hang out. Here's another, here's another issue. And this is where contour right here, this is a perfect example of where a road bed is on my right. I'm idling right here. And you can see out here's these lazier contours, not a whole lot going on to the right, not a whole lot going on. But also 
we get all this clutter here, all this cluttered contour. And it means that there's something hard there. As I idled along the side of it, my side imaging on my Lorentz shows off that roadbed perfectly. Uh, curves through, comes around, now I can find key spots on that. Great places to find fish. Underwater, oh, I just did that one, sorry. Submerged bridges. Uh, again, this is another great shot. I love this one. Right over a road bed, you can see the hardness going off the left and off the right. That's a harder bottom. You know, again, you get out here, you got your lazier, your uh, your lazier contour lines. Not a lot going on on it. So I want to find those stop signs, right? That's the key. Got to find the areas the fish are going to move. Can you catch fish out in those lazy contour lines? Sure, you can. I, I just find it just like just like I can catch smallies on a long, big, giant rock flat, huge rock flat that everything's the same. But if stuff doesn't start to go up and down, start to change, it's hard for me to find the stop sign, which means I'm an angler that gets paid. It's my job to find them day in and day out every single day. And I don't know many people that still don't want to go fishing and don't want to catch them every single day that they go out. And a lot of that is going to revolve around contour. You have to find the stop signs. Here on this situation, you have all these lazy contour lines. All of a sudden, we went over a roadbed. So I went from mud to hard bottom. That's a good thing. And then to my left, you can see here on the Navionics map, it showed a submerged bridge. And when I look at my left on my side imaging, of course, that's what I see. Structure scan points it out right away, shows exactly what was there before it was flooded out. Bridges are great. If you can see them with your eye, it's a neck down. You can always catch bass predator fish, anything around bridges. Well, underwater bridges are, are no different. Matter of fact, they get a heck of a lot less pressure uh, than the ones that you can see with your eyes. So submerged bridges, very key. Other foundations like that, huge. And a lot of times your Navionics mapping will show you that, kind of give you a place to start to want to look around right away. As I come up this, if I was to come over here, now I up to the right, I'm starting to get a lot of contours coming together quick. Well, that's a point, it's an underwater point. They're not always visual with the eye. Um, again, some of the best points I fish don't look like a point if you're looking at it from the water or from land, but underneath the water, the point jets way out, jets underneath. And some of those can be some of the best areas because fish just use points, it's what they do. Uh, Navionics, as far as actually getting into some of the features and stuff like that, is good for both your plotters, as we discussed, Hummingbird, Ray Marine, um, and of course, Lowrance, and at the same time, also good on your pads. You can see I got that Samsung device. I use that. That's at and I also got Verizon ones on my Apple. I, I carry quite a few of them when I'm traveling on the road just to, to make sure I have good service, but the beautiful thing about the Navionics mobile app or the boating app for your for your phone and your uh your pad devices is that you can download them at home while you have good internet and then once you're there no matter what you can be way up in canada as long as you already downloaded that you're going to have that no matter what so you get up into places in canada where there is no lake mapping except for navionics uh, maybe you're borrowing a boat you're using a resorts boat something like that a guide's boat you can still have good lake mapping uh, because I totally understand I can't make casts without knowing what it is that I'm casting to. So just a little tip when it comes to the, the mobile app or the boating app, again, download the maps you want where you have good internet because you'll always have a uh, GPS. So as long as you haven't downloaded beforehand, once you get to the actual lakes, uh, you'll be good to go. First of all, I'm going to talk about some of the features that would be used in both the plotters, so your Lowrance or Hummingbirds, or the boating app. Because um, there's some differences between the two of what you have accessibility to. And we're only talking about ones that I use on the regular. The ones I'm educated the most on, they help me find fish. Uh, the first one is going to be nautical chart and sonar chart for Navionics. Okay, I'm going to explain it real quick to you. Nautical chart is basically the old maps, federal water, used a lot of times for boating, for uh, barge traffic moving up and down the federal in between the red and greens the federal waterway stuff like that the sonar chart layer is a fisherman's layer okay that's one that they're constantly added to because lakes just change mapping changes if your mapping is 10 years old 20 year old it's outdated um, they're so right now it's a race for mapping companies like navionics are, are pumping in dollars into their mapping to try to stay up with it i've seen on river systems where just current alone can move a sandbar that I was catching smallmouth off of 
and saved waypoints, move that sandbar down 50 yards just because of the way the current hits it and moves it uh, in just a year. You know, that's something that you can't keep up with necessarily with mapping if you're not using resource mapping, uh, trying to get it any which way possible to keep the most up to date mapping. And that's where you're going to have to go to the sonar chart layer. As you can see here, I've activated the sonar chart button. So you got Navionics nautical chart, Navionics sonar chart. They come on, on all the uh, Navionics cards, whether it's the regional cards or the Navionics Plus, which is completely customizable for you. Uh, it also comes on the boating app. So you just got to make sure you're looking at those. You know, you, you highlight the function on my lens, boom, I put a sonar chart. I can update all my cards. So as I'm uploading mapping data that I want on my cards, customizable for me, um, at the same time, I make sure to download those sonar charts. When it comes to fishing, um, actually when it comes to anything for me and I'm a fisherman, I'm 100% looking at the sonar chart layer. So make sure you always are uploading, updating, and checking your sonar chart box to make sure those are the maps that you're viewing every day. As you can see, if I go back, you know, the Federal Water, this had stumps on Fort Gibson all the way back through that creek arm. Uh, they never wanted to map it back in the day. It wasn't for federal travel. And now um, it's, it's done. And anglers can utilize that on the water because that's where the fish are at. Uh, here's another view in both the nautical chart and the sonar chart. Uh, nautical chart over here is simple. Again, you just shows the red and greens, vague, easy to read, easy to look at, great if you're just cruising down the river channel. On the other hand, I got the sonar chart activated. Same exact screenshot. It's showing a lot of more of the backwater areas and also showing more dramatic one foot contours all the way up. And that's big. One foot contours are a big, big deal to me. I don't want to see nothing in five foot contours. If I, I have the option to see everything in one foot contours, that's definitely the choice that I want to go with because there's a big difference between five foot and one foot contours. Shallow area offset. Again, this is something you can utilize on your drafts and also utilize on your boating app. Uh, shallow area offset is kind of nice. You know, I, I tend to use it here. I got it checked to seven feet. And right now I'm using the actual for this screenshot. This was taken off of the boating app. But this is something I can also do on my Lowrance. Uh, something that I do quite often, actually, if I, especially if I show up at a lake I don't know or a lake like Lake Mille Lacs that's got dramatic boulder, big rocks and stuff that come up to just a foot. Uh, they can be right in the middle of the lake, you know, and I want to make sure that those pop out at me when I'm running down the lake, when I'm running through the lake. I'm running 50, 60, sometimes 70 miles an hour. I want to see those areas, but also for fishing, you know, it, it helps me see those types of areas. If it's a shallow bite, if I expect fish to be up in the shallow spawning, then, then I want this exactly why I had this screenshot out. I was looking for everything that was in seven feet of water or under that I felt fish would be in, that I felt they would be spawning in, and I can find those kind of flats. And all it does is just put a checkered box around there. It's just kind of a warning. Great thing, I tell people when they go to Lake of the Woods and Rainy Lake to definitely utilize stuff like that for sure, the shallow area offset. Again, can be done on both the boating and the, uh, the graphs themselves. Sonar chart shading. Sonar chart shading was something that came out for the drafts first and just recently was introduced to the boating app. I actually use it quite a, quite a bit. And the reason why I like it so much is it shows me stuff and to me like a 3D style view in, in, in color. Uh, a little bit easier to read. I kind of see a, a, like a bird's eye view of the lake and how the lake and how what the lake looks like. You know, I can see little creek channels. As they, as they start in, you know, your, deep, your darker blues are gonna be your deeper water. And it kind of gives me more of like, if you're a hunter or something like that, and you, you're following, you're looking in the mountains, stuff like that, you can actually see visually the depths and how they look. And I, I can find shallow flats pretty quick. They jump out at my eye. And it's a great thing when I'm backed out, I'm running down the lake, I'm looking around, just trying to figure out, get familiar with the lake. And again, sonar chart shading, it's something easy for the eye. It allows you to, to access and see uh, fish holding water real quick. And at the same time, once you zoom in for more detail, then you start to zoom in and it'll go away from the sonar chart shading and go into the, your actual lake mapping, showing you more of contours and stuff like that as you get up there. But sonar chart shading is a big deal for me. I use it a bunch on my Lowrance units. And recently now uh, when I'm studying, again, I like, like you can see this is a big shallow bar here in the bottom right as I zoomed in. And then you see these little deeper cuts that are in those bars. 
uh, I love it again in places like Florida, big giant flats, and then just shows me that one little flat and that little river, how it cuts in. And to be able to see it from a bird's eye view like that definitely helps me understand uh, why the fish would want to be there, how to access it, and definitely how to fish it. Um, advanced Navionic mapping options. These are some of my favorite, but at the same time, these are mostly on the boating app themselves. Now, these boating apps are very inexpensive, honestly, for what all fishing stuff and electronics cost these days. Uh, the app from the phone, the boating app was a game changer. It, in my opinion, took away uh, handheld GP, the need for a handheld GPS. At the same time, I mean, for ice fishing, it's got everything. The boating app, you go out there, it shows your GPS location on the water. Uh, or on the ice, you can save right where you're at when you can't get out there with your boat. Um, the, the boating app, the boating app is awesome. All the ranch owns Sea Map. Hummingbird owns Lake Master. Uh, I'm sure Garmin's got theirs. Everybody has a mapping. Navionics is pretty universal. Okay, so uh, if you want to use Hummingbird and, and you want to use Lake Master, you'd have to use just a Hummingbird. Well, in this case, Navionics is able to put all of their features. Um, that they have available into their own app since that's theirs. Uh, some of these though are not yet available in uh, on the other chart plotter companies. They're, it's not quite there yet uh, for whatever reason or not political or whatever it may be uh, at the business level. But I can tell you that I utilize my uh, boating app all the time for these upcoming functions. That's why I have that Scosche mount mounted on my on my boat because I'm constantly looking at my phone and not just not just for Navionics mapping I also like to have it there for other stuff like um, you know I, I use Navionics for the satellite overlay uh, so many time when I'm on river systems you know I can see where sand is that's where mapping kind of starts to go away and just being able to see from a bird's eye view up high how I get into backwater areas all that kind of stuff I'm going to use my phone for a lot of that kind of stuff and the Navionics boating app definitely gets a lot of use. Uh, by far, my favorite one is going to be the fishing ranges uh, on sonar chart. Uh, fishing ranges allows me to change the color of the pout that I'm used to. Now, understand, I've been with Navionics since basically the start of my career, so probably 10 years, uh, 10 years or so. I have come very accustomed to staring at this view on the left. That's Navionics standard look. Uh, you know the different shades of blue. And yellow is obviously land. I could change that out on my Lowrance and stuff to do a uh, satellite if I'd like to uh, at the same time. Uh, and then show me what, as we start getting deeper, it starts to get white and it shows all the different contours. Once they added the boating, once they added this fishing ranges on sonar chart on the boating app, I've leaned on that a whole bunch actually, because it helps me, helps the things really jump out. Now we're talking about subtle things. Jump out my eye. You can see, you know, on the top image here, like this little. This little drop right here where it's white, a little deeper hole, or the shallower hole right here where it comes up real shallow uh, before it hits the river channels and stuff like that. Uh, hugely important. Those little subtleties are the stop signs that I was talking about before. And to be able to see that um, from my mapping, still have my graphs up. I'm looking at everything the way I'm accustomed to, but I have that on my phone next to me or my iPad pad next to me. Uh, is a big deal. And then when I'm sitting at home, it's helping me find where these fish are going to be. Where do I want to start my day? I don't like to just get to the boat ramp, turn the key, and, and take off. Fishing Fishing's fun, but, but I also do it for work. So I have to be efficient when I'm on the water. So at night when I'm sitting there, me and my wife are watching TV, oftentimes I'm sitting there on that iPad looking at the next lake that I got coming up, playing with the different mapping options, and trying to figure out where I want to start, you know, I'm looking, I'm, I'm, I'm a fisherman, you know, you know, okay, it's spring, fish are going to be in the shallows, it's summertime, they should be out on the ledges, it's fall, they should be thinking about retreating back shallow, and it's winter time, they're going to be around the shad. So I'm, I'm using what the fish do, what I know that they do, and now trying to figure out areas on the lake that I think I can find an abundance of not only fish, but big, big fish so that I'm catching them all day long, and the fishing ranges are definitely helped me do that uh, considerably. Uh, you can customize your mapping. It's real easy. You can see how you do this. You're just flowing through these different. These are the advanced map options on the boating app. Uh, one of the several advanced map options is fishing ranges right here. And you can see I can set each name. I could name it if I want, but I'm just going, you know, pink zero to five feet, purple six to ten. I don't even know what we call that. Turquoise maybe. 
11 to 20, and orange uh, was 20 to 30. Then after that, it's all white, uh, going back to the white deep river channel, okay? This also makes it very easy on a lake. I don't know where I can run and where I can't run. If I stay in the white, I feel fairly confident that everything's gonna be just fine. You know, if I get up there in that pink stuff, then, then I'm getting real shallow. I might wanna be idling through that kind of stuff. Uh, again, with the fishing ranges, you can change the colors however you want. They're not preset. You can just, whatever color it is that you want to use that makes more sense. I'm constantly playing with it. Actually, some lakes I decide I don't like the way I had it at the last lake and I change it around. So again, the fishing ranges, uh, awesome, awesome deal you can have on the on the uh, boating app. Again, that's for your phone or your, your mobile device or any of your mobile devices and pads. Water level offset. This is a big one. Show up to a lake and I find out the, the water's six feet high or 10 feet high or 10 feet low. It happens all the time. It's never what you think it is. Heck, I've been to lakes four times in a row with four different water levels and it was four different ways of fishing every single time I show up. Sam Rayburn's one of them for me. I seem to never see it at the same water level. I swear it's a different lake every single time I show up. Uh, so again, this, this will help me huge. I, when I get on the water, I pull up my phone, pull up my iPad, uh, I've already have Sam Rayburn, in this case Chickamauga, dialed up. It's what I've been looking at. I check the water level. I get another great thing to have on the apps, the fishing apps for the phone would be to have like for Chickamauga would be the TVA app. It tells me what the water level is, what they're projecting the water to be pulling at all day, so I can figure out exactly what the what you know what their standard full pool is, and then add or take off away from that as they're telling me if it's high or if it's low. So you can see here, if it's nine feet high, um, you know, now, now all of a sudden my contours are getting deeper into these channels. If it's zero, that's what it should look like, a lot more blue. And at the same time, if it's low, now all of a sudden my banks, they're, they're increasing, my banks are coming out, my deeper water is getting a little bit shallower. And this, this might not be that big of a deal on some lakes when you show up and maybe it's two feet high, two feet low, but I've been to lakes where it's 20 feet high, 30 feet, 20 feet low. It's all over the place and the map just doesn't even make any sense. So to be able to do that and offset my water level definitely helps me when I'm out on the water. And again, another thing is I can track that as I'm approaching the tournament, or if you're not a tournament fisherman, you're just going on a vacation, going on a fishing trip, your yearly fishing trip or something, you're getting excited about it. You wanna do a little research, you can definitely start to play with that water level as you see uh, what it is that they're, or, or if they're expecting a lot of rain, they're expecting the water to come up. Again, I'm playing with that water level to try to figure out, you know, some spots I caught them in 20 feet and I show up and now it's 20 feet higher and 40 feet and the fish aren't there. I can't really get to them. They're not using that, they're using something else. So to be able to see that mapping and, and change with the water levels is, is hugely important to me. Uh, sonar chart live this is this is kind of awesome because sonar chart live is one of the many tools or just creating mapping everybody can make their own mapping um, in Minnesota where we have 10,000 lakes I've seen this be a pretty big deal uh, for a lot of places tournament fishing generally has one foot contours already dialed up mapping uh, I'm set but you you got 10,000 technically 13,000 lakes or something like that in Minnesota uh, there's no way they're all going to have a charting crew on them, you know, they're using old DNR maps and just putting some over the top of it so you have something. At the same time, maybe that's your cabin lake and you fish there your whole life and you just want a good map of it. You can do that now, real easy, uh, with with Nav with introducing uh, with Navionics Sonar Chart Live, and you can see basically the principle of how it works. Uh, these are just lazy contours of a river channel that Navionics didn't have. I turned down the app, uh, started started actually just making my map as I was idling through. You can see all my paths and here it is when it was done. Uh, that saves to my unit. You can also give that mapping data to Navionics and the more people that do, the better mapping that, that comes of it. So uh, user generated mapping definitely helps. You know, basically all they ever need is, is it's written in code in your unit when you save this kind of stuff. So you get your bottom level, and then you get your, you know, your depth, and that records your depth, and then your GPS coordinates to that. So really, there's no line to it. It just allows you to get better mapping. So in a place like the Mississippi River, places that are changing all the time, a uh, huge tool, or at the same time, also out on your, uh, out on those lakes that just won't never see a charting crew uh, get there because it's just too small of a lake. 
awesome way to get your lake mapped for you out on the water. Uh, that's basically it for my main presentation. I want to open it up to, to some questions and stuff like that now. Uh, I'm Josh Douglas. Again, you guys can check me out at joshdouglasfishing.com. I do a lot of different videos, educational videos for both Navionics, Lowrance, and just bass fishing in general. And I have a series of webinars that we've done in the past loaded full of good information. You can definitely check them out there. And I want to encourage everybody to check out Navionics. Uh, their webinar series. This is just one part of it. I've watched a whole bunch of them uh, by some pretty awesome anglers from all different walks of life that fish for all different style of, of uh, fish and even even boating and sailing and stuff like that. So definitely make sure that you register if you keep registering for these uh, as you see fit. Let me get into some of these questions. All right, give me one second here. Uh, a lot of people wishing me well. Thank you. I'm trying to start from the start and get through. Okay, how far offshore can my Navionics app operate if I'm using my cell phone? Um, uh, what was the second part of that question? Um, also, is there any chance that an emergency SOS function that will ever be built into the app? Okay, technical stuff like that, I definitely don't know. I fish for Navionics. It's what I do. Um, I don't know much of the technical type stuff as far as the emergency SOS. I know my iPhone has that because every now and then it beeps at me and I didn't even know I did anything and threatens to uh, call the emergency places. So I'm guessing that the phone has those kind of functions uh, instead of the app, its actual self. But as far as how far out it would go, it would be my understanding it would go out as far as you need to go because you're still going to have GPS out there. Now, you need to download the map before you get out there because I'm doubting you're going to have any kind of internet service. Once you get way out there, so you definitely got to make sure to download where you're going while you have internet service. And then once you're out there, you should have GPS function and have full, full functionality no matter how far out you are. Uh, um, uh, how accurate is the live mapping? The, the, the live mapping is extremely accurate, right? But it all depends on you. So that, that's kind of the situation you see in, in late mapping as a whole right now. If you consider how back in the day they mapped, okay, even, even modern back then, I'm not talking like dropping lead stuff down there and checking, which they've gotten obviously 10 times better and have been for quite some time. But generally when a charting company comes in, they're going to do, they're going to mow the lawn. Essentially, they're going to go up like this and they're just going to do swaths and they're going to go back and forth. I believe they call anything in between that interpolation. So they kind of guesstimate what the, what everything is looking like it should do to finish those contour lines in between whatever it is, you know, 200 foot, 100 yards, whatever it is that they're, however they're mapping to get those HD mapping. The more you do it on live, the better. So it's going to be extremely accurate because your graph is telling them, telling uh, the mapping software exactly how deep it is and your exact GPS coordinates. Now, how many times you go back and forth, if you do, if you mow the lawn, then come back through and mow the lawn this way, it's only going to get more and more detailed. And that was the philosophy behind user generated content was you, you go out there, you build a base map, using your using a, a charting crew and at the same time then you have fishermen that are making everything like highlighting everything i've used this function before on lake erie places that i was fishing big reefs and these glacier reefs just like lake Malax, you know they just pushed a bunch of rocks and the glaciers retreated and left mounds of rocks well in in a hundred foot section of water the, it can go up and down up and down up and down almost impossible to map on its own just straight up so the more I'm sitting there fishing and collecting that data, the more accurate my maps get. Now I see those sweet spots and those stop signs a whole heck of a lot better. Uh, so, so is it accurate? It's very accurate, but it just depends on how much effort you're going to put into making that map is how accurate it's going to be. Um, sorry, I'm not sure uh, how to put this into Portuguese. I apologize for that. Um, okay. Uh, okay, Navionics, here's a question. Sorry, guys, I'm just going through a whole bunch of questions. 
sorry, what's the difference between Navionics and Sonar Chart? Again, Navionics is Navionics is both. So you got Navionics has nautical chart, Navionics has sonar chart. Sonar chart is your fishing stuff. Nautical chart is generally your federal waterway, uh, cruising, sailing, boating, uh, barge traffic, stuff like that. That's using the path of, path of least resistance. You don't need to know one foot contours. You don't need the giantly cluttered map. Instead, you just need to kind of know where you can safely navigate. Sonar chart uh, will get more into the backwaters. We'll add one foot contours to everything. Again, when it comes to mapping, have the sonar chart button uh, activated on your units definitely on your boating app and make sure you're you're updating and uploading the, the sonar charts to your Navionics uh, cards. Remember, they all come with that capability, but at the same time, on like a Navionics Plus card, you know, I, I really only download the sonar chart. That's what I want to see. I don't need my, my graphs to read all the rest of the stuff. I just need sonar charts. So if you're a fisherman, uh, sonar charts where it is. And again, you can view the nautical chart and the sonar chart for free. Uh, just by going to navionics.com and checking out their web app, you can. It's it works basically like a Google Earth style. You kind of go in, you figure out where you want to fish, figure out your light map. You can zoom in, you can look at it, you can check the sonar chart box and see what that mapping is available. Awesome tool if you're thinking about buying a Navionics card for your boat for your chart plotters. Uh, look, you know they want to show you first what they got. And, and let you make sure you're happy with your choice. But again, I use that web app all the time. It's 100% free. And that one's on Navionics.com. Again, that's different than the boating app. The boating app is something that you can actually, uh, it's an app for your phone, for your for your pad. Uh, you can save waypoints on it. You can. There's all kinds of different features you can do on that app like we all just went over. Uh, great webinar. Thanks, Captain Greg. I appreciate that, sir. Okay, what strategies would you recommend to get better mapping on tidal rivers like the James River with the water level changing and using Sonar Chart Live? Okay, Sonar Chart Live, I don't know, would be a great function with Sonar Chart Live for a place like the James River. Instead, I'm, I'm using the Navionics. I'm looking, I can use it on the boating app. I can also use it on my Lowrance. I'm basically looking for what the tide's supposed to be and when it's supposed to be there. It has tide charts on actually there for us to view. That's my favorite thing when I'm there because what the Navionics map is good. I know the James River actually quite well. Navionics has got a great map for it. Um, at the same time, that water level does fluctuate a couple feet, either which direction, few feet, either which direction. Um, but it happens so fast all the time, it'd be pretty hard to keep up with it by changing everything with it. So instead, you kind of got to go with the flow. But instead, I'm using those basically, and I'm no expert at tidal fishing, okay? Uh, probably 50-50 on catching checks at tidal reservoirs. And when I do get checks, it's probably because I ignored the tide. And when I don't get checks, probably because I thought I was good at following the tide. So I'm definitely not the one to necessarily give advice on that. But I will tell you, watching those tide charts are hugely important. And again, you can get that on both the boating app and, uh, you know, utilizing Navionics with my Lowrance graphs. Uh, what is the depth shading options? I noticed yours was set at 15 feet. Uh, the depth shading options, as far as like the color, if we're talking about color shading, um, that is going to be at whatever you want. It's completely customizable, actually. You know, I, I start usually zero to five shallow. I think five to 10 is my next. Again, all depends on, on where I'm fishing. If I'm in a place like Florida, where it's probably max depth 20 or even Malax, like max depth of like 30. And really, I don't care much about anything out that deep. You know, I'm wanting anything from zero to about 25 feet. So I'm going to break that down maybe by five foot contours. So you can you can kind of change that as you want to go about it. Uh, but it's completely, again, one of those things that you can completely do on your own as you see fit for your body of water. Uh, can I upgrade my iPad mobile app to a more detailed version? And is there only one available? Uh, you can. You have options, you know, in-app purchases you can make. Like I believe they call it the Navionics Plus. That might give you your advanced mapping options. I uh, should be. Um, something that I've maybe take for granted a little bit. I've been using it for so long. Uh, but the Navionics Plus, if you if you pay, it's not all that much to pay to add on. will bring a little bit more advanced features and potentially some of the advanced features that I'm talking about. So I definitely recommend the in-store or the in-app purchase uh, to make to upgrade the mobile app some because it is a fairly inexpensive mobile app. Uh, 
uh, on its own anyway. And to be able to get that that little bit of more added function and stuff is definitely worth the few bucks that it would cost to go to uh, to upgrade there. Uh, why would I ever want to run Navionics on my Sounder unit when it appears that any mobile device can run the app with less margin of error and a lot more responsive? Well, uh, that I mean, that's a, that's up to you, honestly. Uh, you you could go that route, um, but the functionality of my mapping with my 12-inch screens is a heck of a lot more function easier for me to use on the regular. Uh, a couple negatives would be, you know, iPhones can overheat. My Lorance gra graphs tend to not. Um, a battery can die using battery power and stuff like that. But really, I, I don't really have anything for you on that. I mean, uh, you can. I think, I think though, to be able to have the map with my sonar and, and all the stuff, how I split my screen, my structure scan, my down scan, is definitely more efficient. Um, but if you're looking to save a couple hundred dollars by not getting the card, that's definitely your project. If you can do that um, and, and, and get the same exact maps on your phone. So, yeah, you, you could do it. I'm not, I don't know if it's more responsive or less responsive than my actual unit. I'm guessing my units are going to be more responsive because that the GPS and all that's going to be uh, uh, real good too. And, and again, you can update all these maps, but the boating app, as you, if you're updating those too, you are getting the freshest possible data uh, that you can get. So it, that's a good question. Definitely a good question. But to me, there ain't nothing that can replace my 12 inch Twinkies up there right in front of me to be able to see uh, what I got going in. My face is generally buried in them when I'm practicing for sure. Uh, offshore, meaning the o ocean, Alex, I understand that. that, And that would be something to, uh, um, yeah, when you're getting offshore, like big time out in the ocean, but I'm guessing you still have GPS coordinates out there. So as long as you download the map and all that, you should be, you should be good to go. Uh, I buy... Bruce is asking me, I buy charts every year. Is the Cell app a completely separate product? Uh, well, yeah, the app is a, uh, it is a separate product. Um, you buy charts for your for your chart plotters every year or update them. You know, you don't have to actually go with Navionics. You don't have to actually go to the store and purchase a new card if you don't want. You can just uh, get another subscri subscription. Every card when you buy it comes with a year subscription of unlimited downloading and uploading and they are adding thousands in the course of a year new fresher data mapping uh to their portfolio so it's hugely important i usually don't go but a couple months without updating my map again as far as the cell app that is the navionics boating app uh you can download that and use that too it is separate but as far as the mapping that you're looking at as long as they're both updated they're both the same so um, you get you get what you pay for, no matter which way you go about it. Um, Jim Zelinsky is asking me, what's the best for a kayak fisherman downloading maps to the Lowrance or using the boating app? Yeah, that's a again that both. I mean, I'm gonna say both because you're in a kayak. Don't mean you want to catch fish all day, and just because I'm in a big bass boat, don't mean I don't have the same goals you do. So I, I would say running both. Um, at the same time, if you're, you know, working with your general kayak, one that's not all tricked out like some of these that I see today, which are look absolutely as efficient as my bass boat, except for the big engine not being on the back. Um, but still, at the same time, you know, using just the boating app might be more efficient without having to have batteries in your kayak. If you're trying to, to move around a bunch and stuff like that, then I would definitely recommend that you use the boating app on your cell phone for sure. Uh, what are you looking for fishing smallmouth on Mille Lacs this time of year? That's a good question. That's a real good question. Uh, right now, they're mostly spawning. Um, so the spawn's kind of fun. Uh, I'm one that, you know, uh, I keep tabs on what they're doing, stuff like that. But I definitely like to be offshore using my Navionics mapping and finding those pre-spawners or their post-spawners as they start to go out deep. And right now, most fish are either spawning or starting to transition to that post-spawn. Um, so again, I'm looking for like what I mentioned at the start of the webinar, I'm looking for contour, drastic contour. I don't want long, lazy lines going out to the deep water because I don't expect a fish to want to go across the rocks, the sand, the mud to get to the reef out deeper. Instead, what I'm going to look for are areas where those fish can drop from super shallow water to deep water real quick, fast contour drops. Why, why would you want to run three miles when you can just go 100 feet down a hill? You know, you, you, for them, they can move up if they got sun and they can see, 
they're going to be up on top of the reef. If it's all of a sudden weather changes or they're they're postponed and get out, the food source starts to go, they can just drop off that drop to deeper water. And generally, when you have such dramatic contour changes, you're going to have something else there that's going to hold fish. So whether it's walleyes and muskies and stuff on Mille Lacs where they're off the mud coming off on some of those reefs that don't have hard bottom, but they're real sand, then they'll have grass on them. At the same time, if it's a rock one, uh, you're going to have more dramatic boulder, bigger chunk rock, uh, and that drop again that'll keep them fish moving. It's their highway. It's just like the buck that's going to the does are going to be in the field, and that buck's going to walk the edge of the wood line. That's where he's going to be until he feels safe to walk out into the field at dark or something like that. So finding those edges are big time important right now. It can be mud to rock, it can be sand to rock, it can be small rock to big rock. Uh, and of course, weeds to sand, weeds to rock. Anything that I can find transition this time of year, I'm going to. And we're about to get into some fly hatches uh, big time. So that mid depth range seems to be real good right now. Your deeper water is still real cold, and your shallow water is uh, heated up. You know, they're up there doing their spawn. They're going to slide out somewhere in the middle, and they're really going to start to heat. But good questions. I can talk about fish and smallies uh, for hours on these webinars. Uh, how do you deal with sun glare on your phone? If you notice, let me see if I can get back to this. I'm going to go back. I use a Skosh mount. I actually got it from my good buddy Carl Jacobson, who's with Skosh. And it is this one right here. And you can see, you know, this is what I use. This is actually magnet. magnet. Uh, I got a magnet thing on the back of my life proof. So my phone's completely water resistant. Uh, waterproof and at the same time I can still plug into my boat and keep my phone charged as I'm using it but that is how I utilize the sun glare that that mount moves back and forth so I can kind of move move with it uh, and then it, it also helps to, to keep it plugged in turn the brightness on your phone way up so that you can you can see but again you want to keep that thing plugged in because at least for my phone it tends to start to drain it pretty good but that is how I deal with it and at the same time, you know, it's an it's a inconvenience thing that seems to get better with every single phone that comes out. Uh, dealing with that sun glare seems to get better. Um, uh, how high or low should the density setting be on the Navionics app? I think you're talking about the sonar chart density. Uh, for mine, I put it all the way up. I want to see again. That's that's more for if you're just cruising. And you're you're just cruising around your lake, you know. Um, you don't want to run your boat up onto shallow stuff. You want to stay away from stumps. You want to be out in a little bit deeper water. Then you can take that density and turn it way down. You know, you don't need to see all those contour lines. Uh, it can get a little bit confusing. You know, I I, it's, I got to remember that I'm so used to seeing it. It's like reading another language to me. So at the same time, I show other people, and I'm expecting them just to see it right away, the way I see it, and that's just not. <laughs> case when it comes to fishing though i want to see every single contour change that i possibly can i want to see that dramatic stuff and uh so i'm cranking my density i'm putting it up very high actually so that i, I see more I, I want the information at my fingertips for sure um uh should water level be set to zero on the ocean where tides are constantly changing ronald that's a great question hi don't fish the oceans much. Um, I'm guessing you want it at zero. You know, those are probably bigger tide changes and all that. I, I don't know, man. I, I don't know the answer to that one. Um, I know that, again, when we go back to tides like the James River, I tend to ignore the tide more. I don't ignore the tide, but I, I look at the tide, what it's telling me it should be, and then making a decision on where, where I need to be based on what the tide is doing, but less about changing my map for that if that makes sense i do like to change my water level if it's in flooded or it's down you know those are a lot less changes over time if it's flooded it's going to take a lot longer to get back to normal pool same vice versa if it was low or high so when it comes to tides i i just basically pay attention to the tide charts and and a lot less i but you, i so you to answer your question yes i'd put it at zero and then just pay attention to the tide charts Uh, thanks for the info. You're welcome, Dave. Appreciate it. Uh, I don't. I, do I have more example of road beds? Uh, someone's asked me if I have more example of road beds. 
I definitely do, uh, but not here in, in this already put together presentation. I wouldn't know how I'd find it quick. Um, but but again, if you went to the web app right now and started looking around the Navionics web app, navionics.com, and just started looking at some of your reservoirs and rivers, the roadbeds generally are are right on there. You can actually see them. They're overlaid right onto the map. Um, you know, it'll be like a, a hard line or something will show that there's a roadbed there or maybe look for the submerged bridges and then start looking around them knowing that there had to be a road there uh, at one point in time or look for a constant um, contours that come up but maybe make like a longer stretch like more more man-made but generally my road beds for the most part are already on all my Navionics maps uh, but sorry if I had more screenshots of them I'd show you but again check out that Navionics web app start getting familiar with those road beds uh, yes uh, that question David asked so are you running both the rants and the cell phone using Navionics to see different views 100% I am yeah I I, I uh, well sometimes I'll actually sometimes depending on what I'm doing if it's takeoff if it's in the morning I'll actually put a Navionics up up my Navionics app up on, or my Navionics card up on both my Lorances at my face I'll have one zoomed way out so I'm seeing the big picture of the lake where I want to go and another one zoomed in so I can see any obstacles shallow water uh, the river channel stuff that I need to stay in as I'm running 70 miles 70 plus miles an hour down the lake uh, it's hugely beneficial to me. Once I sit down and start fishing, one of them goes to side imaging, the other one keeps its map, and at the same time, I'll have my Navionics app right there too uh, to use some of those advanced options that I want while while I'm practicing. Uh, generally, once the tournament comes, I'm just using my Navionics map right on my graph, and being efficient and just fishing more more so waypoints than anything. I'm using the maps to help me find fish. That's big time. Help me navigate safely and help me find fish holding areas. Uh, how do you enter coordinates into the app? Let me just see here if I can pull up my app real quick and walk you through that. So, I don't know if you guys can see this. Here's the boating app. Now, let's say this was my coordinates right here. Just This was the spot I wanted to fish right here. Hit Puts a little crosshairs on it, and I hit that. It'll tell me my coordinates right there. Um, I think that's what you're looking for. I hope that's what you're looking for. Pretty easy, pretty easy to do. You just work with the crosshairs and hit the question mark and it'll tell you what your coordinates are. Uh, where do you find water level information, Mark is asking. Water level information, generally, uh, if there is a dam of some sort, um, they, they'll have that kind of information. So what I usually do is just like my next, my next tournament's the Arkansas River, I just Google Arkansas River water level and usually give me a couple different options. Uh, there's apps just for water level. There's apps for barge traffic. There, there's apps now for so many different things to go along with the Snavionics app uh, to definitely make sure you have that phone right there. But uh, the TVA, if you just look up, you know, through Tennessee River, fish anything on T Tennessee River, Kentucky Lake, Chickamauga, Pickwick, Gunnersville, any of those. Uh, there's an actual TVA app or, you know, shows basically anything in the Tennessee, Alabama area and it'll show exactly what the water level is, what it's projecting to be, and what they're pulling water at. So uh, usually a quick Google search of the body of water you're going to will yield uh, enough results to get you the information that you need. Uh, Todd Greenwood asks, one, oh, no, states, one of the best informational presentations I've seen on Navionics. Thank you. No problem, man. That's, that's my deal. Uh, Navionics, I appreciate appreciate that. Thank you, Todd. Uh, thanks, mate. It's been very helpful here in Australia. What's up? Team Carl Jockinson. I'm sure you know who he is, man. Uh, big fan of Australia. Can't wait to get out there sometime. Kale says, thanks for doing this. I think we're starting to run low. I'll leave this going here for just another minute or two. We're, at, oh, we're actually already pushing that hour that hour timeline. So uh, I do appreciate everyone for coming on. Again, uh, subscribe, check these things out. Uh, if you want any information on me, again, my name is Josh Douglas. My Instagram, YouTube, Facebook handle is Josh Douglas Fishing. And I encourage you guys to subscribe, follow along. And anytime you have any kind of questions of this type of stuff, uh, anything fishing related, by all means, contact me on, on any one of my platforms and uh, I will definitely get to you just as soon as I can and try to answer any of those questions I can. Again, thanks for logging on. Uh, there's a lot of people on here. Thanks for doing that. And y'all have a good week and tight lines.